Voyager 1 is now a starship. The space probe launched from Central Florida 36 years ago. Did you know that it takes more than 22 hours for a signal from Earth to reach Voyager 1? Since 1977, the two Voyager probes have traveled billions of kilometers between themselves and the Sun and are even known to have ventured into interstellar space. The insights that these flying old-timers are giving us into this wondrous cosmic world are as astonishing as they are unique. But some time ago, Voyager 1 sent back some sensational data to Earth that immediately caused a stir among experts. The only thing that was certain was that something powerful must have happened somewhere in space. But as the researchers soon realized, the incident also represented a mystery that was no less gigantic. So, be sure to stay tuned until the end to find out what the old probe recorded in the depths of space and what astronomical mystery it set in motion. The distances in the cosmos are simply enormous. After all, the average distance between the Sun and Earth is a whopping 150 million kilometers, a distance that pushes the limits of our imagination. But let's be honest, what are 150 million kilometers compared to 25 billion kilometers? This is the incredible distance that Voyager 1 has now traveled between itself and our home planet. Ultimately, there is only one other man-made object that has ventured so far into space, Voyager 2, which is currently around 20 billion kilometers away from our central star. However, the journey of the Voyager probe becomes even more remarkable when we remember that they were not originally designed to set such impressive records. Since they actually left Earth only to gather new information about the then largely unexplored outer planets, they were designed to last a maximum of 10 years in space. But as we know today, the identical twin probes passed the test of time with flying colors, proving that 1970s technology is sufficient to explore previously unreachable regions of the cosmos. Against this backdrop, however, it's only natural that this technology is now hopelessly outdated. If you're watching our video on your cell phone, you're holding a device in your hand that has millions of times the storage capacity of the Voyager probes. The specific mission data is still stored on magnetic tapes with a storage capacity of 536-bit, and even the transmission rates of our modern mobile communications are almost 40,000 times higher than those of the aging space pioneers. And yet, Voyager 1 and 2 have achieved something that neither a smartphone nor any other space probe has ever accomplished. They have ventured into interstellar space. Launched on August 20th and September 5th, 1977, with Voyager 2 leaving Earth before Voyager 1, the probes first examined the four outer planets of the solar system. But after the first, and in some cases still only images of Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune had been captured and countless pieces of valuable data collected, NASA decided to extend the mission and let the duo continue their journey beyond the boundaries of our home system what the Voyager probe discovered in interstellar space. On August 25, 2012, the moment finally arrived and Voyager 1 became the first probe in history to make contact with the extreme outer regions of the solar system. The research center was particularly interested in how exactly the sun interacts with the particles and magnetic fields outside the heliosphere. And just to recap, the heliosphere is a region of space dominated by the sun and influenced by its magnetic field and solar wind. It's something like a natural protective shield that surrounds our home system and shield it from most of the cosmic radiation from interstellar space. After Voyager 1 successfully reached and investigated the boundaries of this region, its twin sister followed on November 5, 2018. Scientists were therefore eager to compare the data collected previously with the new information. And lo and behold, the comparison revealed a fundamental consistency, confirming that cosmic reality is indeed quite different from what we previously thought. While experts had previously believed that the heliosphere was asymmetrical, extending far backward, the Voyager insight suggested that it's actually a round and therefore symmetrical structure. Apart from this astonishing confirmation, however, there were also significant differences in terms of plasma. Before entering the helipause, or in other words, the outermost boundary of the heliosphere, Voyager 1 had detected a sharp decline in plasma flows, while its advance into the interstellar medium was accompanied by great turbulence in the surrounding plasma. Against this backdrop, the researchers assumed a thick but unstable boundary region, which is why they were all the more astonished when they saw what Voyager 2 was confronted with here. This time, the helipores appeared strangely thin and stable. But what is the explanation for these cosmic contrasts? Well, experts point to the influence of the sun. Voyager 1 flew through the helipause during a minimum in the solar activity cycle, 
which suggests that the interstellar magnetic fields and cosmic radiation had penetrated deeper into the outer reaches of the heliosphere at that time. However, when Voyager 2 arrived in this area, the sun was in a phase of high activity, and its solar wind may have stabilized the heliopause. Voyager 2 also provided evidence that an extensive magnetic wall does indeed exist on our side of the heliopause, acting as additional protection against cosmic radiation. In detail, this magnetic field appears to be stronger than any other in the heliosphere, and we are clearly dealing with an extremely dynamic structure here. Scientists say that the magnetic shield is formed by magnetic currents that move toward the helipoles where they eventually weaken and flow off to the side. As soon as the sun's magnetic field reverses direction during the next activity cycle, this process begins again, but this time with reverse polarity. In addition, the probes also show that the interstellar magnetic field is about two to three times stronger than previously expected. Conversely, this means that the interstellar particles exert up to ten times more pressure on the helipoles than previously thought. With all this information in mind, one might think that we now have a fairly comprehensive picture of the outer reaches of our home world. But that is not the case. In reality, we are still a long way from uncovering all the secrets of the helipoles and interstellar space. Although we now know that the boundary of the solar system forms a dynamic and complex system together with the interstellar medium, it's still a gigantic system that has only been passed through and explored in two places so far. In view of this, future follow-up missions are essential, but this task will have to be taken on by another research probe. The whole truth is that we have to come to terms with the idea that the Voyager program will come to an end in the foreseeable future. Unfortunately, sudden loss of contact and technical problems are now almost par for the course for Voyager. And it was only a few weeks ago that NASA had to resort to a set of thrusters on Voyager 1 that had long since been deactivated in order to save the record-breaking probe once again. In order to extend the mission for as long as possible, the probes have also been put on a strict power diet. To save energy, NASA is gradually switching off more and more onboard instruments that are not absolutely necessary for continued operation. As a result, the Voyager probes now have only three of their original ten instruments. Fortunately, however, Voyager 1 plasma sensor was still active in the fall of 2022, allowing the old-timer to show us that something had happened out there that left even the most experienced astronomers speechless. The strongest gamma-ray burst ever recorded. On October 9, 2022, Voyager 1 was racing through space at its usual speed of around 61,000 km per hour when its instrument suddenly sounded the alarm. Specifically, the probe had detected an inexplicably large influx of high-energy radiation, heralding an event that would strike our blue home planet 19 hours later. It was then clear that this was a gamma-ray burst unlike any other. While these are already among the brightest and most energetic explosions in the universe, capable of releasing as much radiation in seconds as the sun does in its entire lifetime, this event was 70 times more powerful than anything previously measured. Named GRB 221009A, the radiation generated was so intense that it blinded gamma-ray detectors across the globe and even caused measurable changes in the Earth's ionosphere and that despite the fact that the actual location of the explosion was a full two billion light years away from us. Due to a tremendous intensity, the spectacle quickly became known as BOAT, which is nothing more than an abbreviation for brightest of all time. Scientists said that such an extreme event only occurs on Earth once every 10,000 years. But what was actually responsible for it? Well, that was precisely the question that preoccupied experts in the months that followed, and one that could only be answered in April last year. However, it was clear from the outset that the mega explosion, which lasted 13 minutes, was clearly one of the long gamma ray bursts that are usually caused by supernovae of massive stars. Confusingly, however, some typical supernova characteristics were missing both during the actual burst and in the afterglow, turning the incident into a genuine astronomical mystery. The fact that experts then had to exercise some patience was due to the event itself. The burst was so bright that it outshone any potential supernova signatures for months afterward. At times, the afterglow resembled the bright headlights of a car driving directly toward you, making the actual vehicle invisible. And so it was that researchers had to wait more than half a year before the afterglow of the explosion had dimmed enough to allow close analysis. This was then carried out using the James Webb Telescope, and after its near-infrared spectrometer, NIR spec, had done its work, it was clear that the burst was indeed the result of a supernova. 
This was revealed by the characteristic element signatures in the afterglow. The experts were therefore all the more astonished when they discovered that the powerful spectacle had not been caused by a powerful star explosion, but by a supernova that was hardly different from any other. The question now was how an ordinary supernova could trigger such an extraordinary gamma ray burst. And astronomers suspect that this may have been due to the special shape of the explosion. When fast-spinning massive stars collapse, they form concentrated jets of particles that race through space at nearly the speed of light. If the jets are particularly narrow and concentrated, they produce a particularly bright high-energy beam. And indeed, this was one of the narrowest jets the researchers had ever seen in a gamma-ray boast. However, this did not completely solve the mystery, as it is theoretically possible that other factors were also at play. And according to the astronomers, it will probably be years before we finally know why the seemingly normal supernova caused such intense radiation. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. We'll see you soon.